something nice about the actor, the writer, and the director. This is probably the most amazing script I have ever read in my entire concur. career. And I concur. Who wrote it? Uh, Sam. This is the genius, genius talent of Mr. Sam. Yeah! Turn it around right at exactly. <laughs> I was about to tell you you're all fired. <laughs> Are we done stroking sand? Yes. Let's move on. Oh, Why stop? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, you're about to read Finding the Bunny by Samantha Paris. That's me. A book about love and love lost in the world of voiceover and how Sam built the largest voiceover academy in the country and transformed the lives of thousands of students. Oh, wait a second, you forgot about so, me. Okay. Since you might not have time to read it, the following is the entire book in 90 seconds. This is a bad idea. It started with alcoholic parents. Oh, Oh, you bitch! God help me. Sam thought life would be easier if she were dead. Makes sense at the time. And learned as a child to find the hidden bunny on the cover of Playboy magazines, becoming a metaphor for the search for our hidden secrets, which reveal our inner depths. So that's what it means. First, there was American husband number one. Love him. Hey! British husband number two. Love him. Stop it! Italian husband number three. Bruschetta, linguini, cacciatore. It doesn't sound like that. Eventually building the biggest voiceover academy in the country. Along the way, helping students discover their voice, which is another metaphor for themselves. I found my bunny. I found mine. I found a hedgehog. <laughs> so that was the first thing. That was that it sounded like hedgehog. <laughs> yeah. Hed like Sorry, Chuck. Hedgehog. Hedgehog. Yeah, I found a hedgehog. I found a hedgehog. Sounds like hawk. Hedgehog. There you go. I found a hedgehog. <laughs> Just like that. Chuck. I found a hedgehog. Chuck, that, just like that. that. Do that. Okay. I'll do that. That's natural. Along the way, helping students discover their voice, which is another metaphor for themselves. I found my bunny. I found mine. I found a hedgehog. <laughs> Chuck, can you give me a couple of wild, please? A uh, group of three. I found a hedgehog. I found a hedgehog. I found a hedgehog! B. Okay, great. Thank you. Will Samantha ever feel truly safe? Will she discover a sense of peace and acceptance in her life? Does Samantha ever find her bunny? It'd be a crappy book if I didn't. Good point. Thanks. Now it's your turn to read Finding the Bunny by Samantha Paris, a book with an emotionally satisfying ending which makes it not crappy. That's great. I like that last one. You guys want to do it again? You know what, Brian? I'm going to keep you in there for a day. Okay. Can you read that last line as a pickup? Yeah. But without any... Uh, Without any punctuation in eh? it? Yep. Thank you. Now it's your turn to read Finding the Bunny by Samantha Paris, a book with an emotionally satisfying ending which makes it not crappy. <laughs> That's funny too. Yeah. All right, let's edit that and see what it sounds like. You stepped out of line. You know, wait a minute, guys. Speaking of talent and not crappy, um, without trying to be mushy like I have a tendency to be, um, <laughs> thank you guys so much. Uh, obviously, this means the world to me. You've all worked so hard, and quite honestly, you do represent a lot of what the book is about. I mean, yeah, the book is my life, and me finding my bunny, you know, me going on my own journey. Um, but I know how much each one of you has struggled, and how hard you've worked, and, and how it's been really beautiful for me all these years to watch you guys discover your bunnies while I was searching for my own and to really have it come full circle to which I now feel so much more a part of you guys because I've gone through it too. It's really special. So this is a this is a day I'm just never ever gonna forget it. Thank you. We love you so much. Whatever, it's selling jeans. Right. And then you look and you do it three times and then you're just about to send it in and you're like, oh my god, yep. there it is. <laughs> and yep. then 
You have to erase the kit and go back and do it again. <laughs> then you find your bunny. Yeah, when, it, when you finally find the bunny and all of a sudden it just sounds a thousand times better than that great idea you thought you had. And it's just so amazing. It's such an amazingly simple little thing. Uh, well, my goal was always to find the bunny before I record because the worst feeling in the world is to be in the car on the way home and it's like, shit. Yes. That's what I should have done. For me, finding the bunny is learning to play and take risks, okay. which is something that I'm very happy to say Voice Tracks has always allowed me to do. Yeah. And That's it's a kind of a new, fun, exciting thing for me to do it in my 50s. I think if you're going to find your bunny, you got to find yourself. And there's no place like here to do that work. It always sounded a little dirty to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Straight up. Tell us about your bunny. Well, Sam. Can you all see this? Uh, I think my particular bunny was Voice Tracks itself. Because you have, there you go. Because people who have a particular dream but they don't necessarily know how to make that dream come to fruition need people like her, need places like this.